Okay, so the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL are not regular smartphones because the company that makes them, Google, is not a regular phone company. They're not even a hardware company. They're a software company that just happens to make hardware to flex how good their software really is. Now, if you look at the older Pixel phones, like the first, the second, and third generation of Pixel phones, these are phones that have a clear focus on software, particularly like Google Assistant and how they integrate all the apps and features of the Google ecosystem into their voice controlled stuff. And also their camera system, like not the hardware, like the actual camera lens and the sensor in their Pixel phones isn't particularly special, but it's what they do in software that really makes their computational photography shine. So clearly Pixel phones are software based devices, but this year, with the Pixel 4, during the presentation, they drew a lot of attention to two hardware features, the 90 hertz screen and how smooth and fluid it was, as well as their new radar-based motion sensing tech. And in doing so, I think they inadvertently shifted people's attention away from the traditional stuff that Pixel's known for, their amazing software, onto hardware, which is really not what Google's Pixel phones are all about. And that's where there's a bit of a problem because the optics or like the public perception of these phones, the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL, is a little bit skewed because of that marketing. So first I wanna talk about this new radar sensing tech. The truth is this technology is freaking awesome. And what we're seeing, the implementation that we see on the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL right now, isn't its full potential. Because when you look at Google's original video of this technology from 2015, they had a team of these really passionate engineers developing this radar tech, and the capabilities looked amazing. Like you had this fine fingertip control, not just your fingers, but actually just rotating and tweaking your fingertips could give you this precise control of a variety of interfaces. Like that example they had of that map where you could move the map around and zoom in and zoom out with just your fingertips, like that looked incredibly useful. Like we've all been there. We've manipulated maps on our phones and it's like your fingers obscuring what you're looking at. That map control looks amazing, but that's not what we have. In this first generation or first iteration of this hardware, we don't have fingertip control. We don't even have finger control. It's full hand movement, which is honestly not nearly as useful but you can't fault them. Like you can't fault Google for putting this radar tech into this phone. Cause a lot of people are like, that's so stupid. It's a gimmick. I would never use my phone like that. That's not the point. They put this sensor in here as step one so that people can get used to the idea of gesture based controls for their phones. But where I think they messed up was in marketing it the way they did. Like when you put this much effort and time into talking about this feature, when its current capabilities are so limited, it just opens them up to criticism. And I think for some people, they'll be disappointed. Like if you purchase this phone thinking that that tech has a more substantial functionality than it actually does, you'd be disappointed. So what I think they should have done is still include the radar tech, but not talk about it so much as if it was some kind of headlining feature and just worked on the software over time until it became really awesome. Now, another feature that's kind of controversial about this phone is its price, if price can be considered a feature. This thing starts at 800 bucks for the small one, 900 bucks for the big one. Maybe it's from tariffs or a particular profit margin they have to hit, but these phones are very expensive on paper. But the thing that sucks is that they're often way cheaper than their launch price. Like Pixel phones usually go on sale on Black Friday by like 150, 200 bucks. So it's I don't know, it's just weird to me that they still launch these phones at such a high price, but then over the course of 12 months, they just consistently drop this price on the phone. Companies like OnePlus and Apple, like they don't drop the prices on their phones. These guys go on sale all the time. I don't know, it's obviously a business strategy. They do it on purpose, but I feel like if they just launch this phone at a more appropriate price, people wouldn't criticize them for these high prices from the get-go. Now, if I look at this phone with this different perspective, where the Pixel 4 is now a $650 or $700 phone, and I temper my expectations of what this radar technology is supposed to do, this phone is great. I love the screen. The 90 hertz refresh rate is fantastic. The face unlock is super fast, like literally the fastest face unlock that I've used. The speakers sound great. Not much different from what the Pixel 3 offered last year, but still excellent speakers. And the battery life, this is something that a lot of people were concerned about, myself included. A 2800 milliamp hour battery in the small Pixel 4 with a 90 hertz refresh rate and battery life is not great. I was honestly disappointed. 
Now, I think whatever software they're using to downclock that refresh rate from 90 down to 60 is quite aggressive, and it's like a six hour, maybe six and a half hour screen end time. If you use your phone a lot, you might run out of juice before the end of the day, but if you're a lighter user, I don't think that's an issue. Uh, camera. So this is a topic that I think is gonna be more subjective this year. Both the Pixel 4 and the iPhone 11 Pro or iPhone 11 are going to have the best cameras in the market right now. They're so close to each other. They're different in how the images look, but it's, it's hard for me to say which one is better or worse. If I had to pick a winner, it would actually be the iPhone 11. Like this is just a personal thing. I find the iPhone 11's app easier to use because there's no selection of night sight specifically. It just happens automatically. And for the average person, I think that should be the way the default camera app should handle it. But I do find that the Pixel 4 handles low light a little better on faces. It just looks a little cleaner to me. But one thing for sure, both of these cameras have better image quality than the OnePlus 7T. And I think that's a comparison a lot of people make because this is also rocking a 90 hertz screen, but it's 200 bucks cheaper and it has double the storage. So if you're deciding between the two, like it should be relatively simple. If you care a lot about picture quality and you wanna have the best possible camera on your smartphone, Pixel 4 is the option. I mean, that's what this thing offers. It's a relatively unique experience to have a 90 hertz screen with the best possible camera. Pixel 4. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.